next week, having a being online like this. And uh, as far as office hours go, for this week and next week, we'll, we'll have office hours Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, both weeks, from uh, 8 a.m. to noon. And so if you need something, come in and let myself know. And uh, yeah, otherwise, stay tuned for more announcements as we move forward. This is an ever-changing thing, and uh, we're, we're just trying to do the best we can and, and love the Lord and love one another the entire time. So uh, that is all my announcements. Very short list today. And so if you're at home, go ahead and give a little nuts to the camera, uh, hug a loved one, uh, blow a kiss to someone in the room, be a little goofy if you so desire, but otherwise let us get started with uh, the service today. So please stand if you are uh, willing and able. Thank you. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Behold, the great day of the Lord is coming. Turn our hearts to your gracious promise. The sun of righteousness shall rise with healing in its wings. The Lord is faithful. He will establish us and guard us. The Lord has made known his salvation. He has remembered his steadfast love and faithfulness. Please be seated. Beloved, let us confess our sin, our fears, our weaknesses, and our need of God's help. Gracious God, as a called and ordained servant of Christ and by his authority, I therefore forgive you all of your sins in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. O Lord, almighty and ever-living God, you have given exceedingly great and precious promises 
to those who trust in you. Rule and govern our hearts and minds by your Holy Spirit, that we may live and abide forever in your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. What do we do when life happens? Where do we turn when life throws us curveballs or when we are feeling completely hopeless? We need a comforting declaration of God's mighty, sustaining presence. The Lord provides that for us in today's Old Testament reading. The Old Testament reading for today is Psalm 146. Praise the Lord! Praise the Lord, O my soul! I will praise the Lord as long as I live. I will sing praises to my God while I have my being. Put not your trust in princes, in a son of man, in whom there is no salvation. When his breath departs, he returns to the earth. On that very day, his plans perish. Blessed is he whose help is the God of Jacob, whose hope is in the Lord his God, who made heaven and earth, the sea, and all that is in them, who keeps faith forever who executes justice for the oppressed, who gives food to the hungry. The Lord sets the prisoners free. The Lord opens the eyes of the blind. The Lord lifts up those who are bowed down. The Lord loves the righteous. The Lord watches over the sojourners. He upholds the widow and the fatherless. But the way of the wicked, he brings to ruin. The Lord will reign forever. Your God O Zion, to all generations, praise the Lord. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. There are indeed many things in our lives that can cause us to fear. The Christians of the first century were no exception. So God gave them the sure and certain assurance concerning their future. We also need these encouraging words from the Lord. Today's epistle is reported in 1 Thessalonians Chapter 4, verses 13 to 18. But we do not want you to be uninformed, brothers, about those who are asleep, that you might not grieve as others who do, who have no hope. For since we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so, through Jesus, God will bring with him those who have fallen asleep. For this, we declare to you by a word from the Lord that we who are alive who are left until the coming of the Lord will not perceive those who have fallen asleep. The Lord himself will descend from heaven with a cry of command, with the voice of an archangel, and with the sound of the trumpet of God, and the dead in Christ will rise first. Then we who are alive, who are left, will be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air, and so we will always be with the Lord. Therefore, encourage one another with these words. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. <clears throat> the day of the Lord will bring judgment and wrath to those who trust in their own righteousness. Just ask the foolish virgins in our gospel reading. They thought they could enter the wedding feast without preparation, and while they hunted, hunted hither and yon to find for themselves what they needed, the bridegroom came, and the door was shut. But we aren't left to our own devices. We aren't left outside knocking. We have a champion, and our champion is the bridegroom, Jesus, who is coming for his bride on the last day. The gospel is recorded in Matthew chapter 25, verses 1 to 13. Please rise for the reading of the Holy Gospel. Then the kingdom of heaven will be like ten virgins, who took their lamps and went to meet the bridegroom. Five of them were foolish, and five were wise. For when the foolish took their lamps, they took no oil with them, but the wise took flasks of oils for their lamps. As the bridegroom was delayed, they all became drowsy and slept. But at midnight there was a cry, Here is the bridegroom, come out to meet him. And all those virgins rose and trimmed their lamps. And the foolish said to the wise, Give us some of your oil, for our lamps are, go are going out. But the wise answered, saying, Since there will not be enough for us and for you, go rather to the dealers and buy it for yourselves. And while they were going to buy, the bridegroom came, and those who were ready 
went in with him to the marriage feast, and the door was shut. Afterward, the other virgins came also, saying, Lord, Lord, open to us. But he answered, Truly I say to you, I do not know you. Watch, therefore, for you know neither the day nor the hour. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, O Christ. Please be seated. Grace, mercy, and peace unto us all this day from God, Heavenly Father, Jesus the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. There are always a few moments in history that we remember where we were at. Many of us, it perhaps was Pearl Harbor Day, December 7th, 1941. For some, it was perhaps the moon landing. Others, the assassination of JFK. For many of us today, it was September 11th, 2001. We remember exactly where we were. We remember who we were with. We remember what we were doing. I, that's going to make some of you feel old, I was in third grade in Mrs. LeCarrie's class. Yes, I know. I'll give you a second to... There you go. All right. We often remember where we were at for these very traumatic things. I remember I wanted to watch TV when I got home. Uh, we got sent home early, and I thought that I could watch TV, but not that day. I remember my parents were in anguish. They, they, they needed to watch this. They needed to see what was happening, watching in disbelief 
as these events were unfolding, asking questions, who would do such a thing? How could such a devastating thing happen? Our emotions were all over the place that day. Many who were not interested in the military, whether it was December 7th, 1941, or September 11th, 2001, or any time in between, many of them on those days quit their jobs and went and enlisted. They wanted to be part of what we, in Scripture, in Romans 13, the sword who punishes the evildoers who take innocent lives. On those days, we saw neighbors helping neighbors. We saw pastors and chaplains uh, going and being the feet and hands of Christ to those who needed it. A lot of people in that day were searching for answers. How could this happen? Many of our congregations got together in prayer. Many people got together in their homes, with their families, prayed, talked. How could this happen? How do we make sense of this? Where should we put our trust and our hope? After these incredibly tragic events, many people put their hope in the government. Many people put their hope in others, in friends, in humans, in leaders. They put their trust in the princes of the world to explain the evil and to deal with it. We see this truthfulness in Psalm 146. It is a waste of our time to put our own trust in the earthly princes, yet we do it over and over and over again. Thinking we can work it out ourselves, thinking if we just get the right person elected, then everything will be fixed. If we just get the, the, right, the right guy in this spot, then it will all be good. Looking towards the government, looking towards friends, looking towards other humans to solve our problems, that is folly. For help against the evils of this world, the evils who enacted December 7th, the attack on Pearl Harbor, the evils on the attack on September 11th, 2001. For those evils, we can't go to the princes or the sons of man, we are to go to God. We are to go to Yahweh. We are to go to Christ. Psalm 146 reminds us of where our true help and our true hope comes from. Yahweh, the true Lord of all, the creator of everything, and today, we are much reminded of the sin in our world, whether it's even thinking about the election or thinking about COVID. We are constantly reminded of the sin and the pain and the suffering and the sadness that we have. And it's not just those. We all have these individual battles we're facing, whether it's with our jobs, whether it's some addiction that we have, whether it's illnesses ourselves. We still have these battles raging on in our lives. The battle against a deadly illness. The battle against the guilt and the shame of an addiction, of previous choices, of failed relationships that can haunt you and beat you down. The battle of sadness in our lives over things happening in ways we didn't want them to happen. We all are struggling right now. We're struggling with life. And oftentimes we feel hopeless. We feel helpless. Too often we turn to princes of this world, to the Son of Man, but very quickly we learn that salvation is not there. We find only more pain, more suffering, more guilt, more hopelessness. And we realize time and time again that those humans that we put our trust in don't have salvation. Because they, just like us, when we die, 
he returned to the earth. On that very day, his plans perish. But dear friends, we have been redeemed by Yahweh, the God of Jacob, who sent his one and only Son into the world, the Prince of Peace, the King of Kings, the Bob of Gilead, who was planted on this earth, who tabernacled among us, was born for you. Jesus was born to fulfill the law for you. Jesus was born to conquer sin and death and the grave for you. He was born to die for you. Jesus was planted in the ground for you and was raised again on the third day for you. Jesus, the Prince of Peace, lived, suffered, died, and rose again for you. It is all too clear that we shouldn't put our trust in princes, that we shouldn't put our trust in humans of this world, yet we do it repeatedly. We continue to look to ourselves for answers. We continue to look to ourselves and others to self Medicaid. We just want the pain to end. We'll go anywhere for the pain to end or use others to get that happiness that we think others have. The psalmist calls us to repent of that, to turn to Yahweh and praise Him with all our being. Turn to God, the creator of heaven and earth and the sea and the mountains and everything that is in it. We do believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, who sent his one and only Son, Jesus, to be our Savior. This very Jesus was there at, was there at creation, who also executes justice for the oppressed. He is our sacrifice. He declares us justified because of his death, not because of anything that we have done, but because of what he has done. This Jesus, who died on the cross and was raised again, feeds the hungry. And he continues to feed us with everything that we need for body and soul. He provides us with physical food and also with spiritual food. To those who are hungry for forgiveness of sins and a peace that the world cannot give. Jesus comes to you with his body and his blood at the Eucharist and provides you with forgiveness, life, and salvation. This Jesus sets prisoners free. He paid the price not with worldly gold or silver, but with his holy, precious blood and with his innocent suffering and death. So dear friends, you are forgiven I'm going to say it again. You are forgiven. You are forgiven. You are free from guilt and shame. You who were born spiritually blind, you can now see. You have been given sight. The Holy Spirit has given you faith to see the salvation in Jesus Christ. To gaze upon the cross and know that is where Jesus died. For you. He lifts you up when you are low, when you feel helpless, when you feel hopeless, when the weight of the world is too much. Christ is there. He loves you and declares you righteous. He watches over you as a sojourner on the earth. Because remember, you are but a pilgrim here. Heaven is your home. He upholds you when you have lost a loved one. You are not alone. He has promised to never leave you, nor forsake you. Yahweh, your God, will reign forever. My friends, what a beautiful, beautiful song we have. It helps us to bask in the glory of our God who has redeemed us through the blood of Christ.
this song in our heart and on our lips. We join the psalmist in praising the Lord with all of our being. In Jesus' holy and most precious name. Amen. A couple things. If you, so we continue with uh, giving offerings online. If you are so able, otherwise you can drop off during the week at church. Uh, but now, so we will be doing the Nicene Creed and then doxology, the prayers, the Lord's. So if you've got this, please just try to follow along. Otherwise, follow along with us. Where are we? All right. Let us with one voice confess the words of the Nicene Creed. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things, visible and invisible. And in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of the Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten not made, being made of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven, and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary, and was taken in, and was crucified also for us under the conscious Pilate. He suffered and was buried, and the third day he rose again, according to the scriptures, and ascended into heaven, and sits at the right hand of the Father, and he will come again in glory, to judge us all the living and the dead, whose kingdom will have no end. And I now believe Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshiped and glorified, who spoke by the prophets. And I believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and that I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. We continue with the singing of the doxology. Seek the best treatments for patients suffering. 
God of mercy, grant patience and insight to our chaplains who serve in all branches of our armed forces and the civil air patrol. Only through your sustaining love can they move out daily with confidence and joy. These and all things we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and rules with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Let us pray now to God, our Heavenly Father, for the peace and supplication of our church body and Christians all over the world. God, our Father in heaven, look upon us with mercy. Your needy children upon the earth. Grant us the grace that your holy name be hallowed by us in all the world through the pure and true teaching of your holy word and the fervent love shown forth in our lives. Graciously turn us from all false doctrine and evil living, whereby your precious name is blasphemed and profaned. Lead us to follow your light of the world. Strengthen us, encourage us, and guide us. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Lord, and giver of all good gifts, we thank you for all that you have provided for us. We thank you for the food on our tables, the drink and sustenance from your hands. We praise you for the friends, families, and the communities that you have placed around each one of us. We thank you for our pastors, teachers, church leaders, volunteers, all who work in your stead. Continue to equip us through the power of your Holy Spirit and work in us that faith in Christ, which is only given through the Holy Spirit, by the means of grace, and remember us in our baptisms. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Father, above all things, people in situations, we pray for all pastors, church leaders, volunteers, parents, teachers, and all those who know you. We pray for the unborn, the defiant, the ones who are lost. Lord, we ask that you work through us to bring them into the fold. We pray for President Trump and all the elected officials that you may work through them so that your will be done. We pray for our sin president, Matthew Harrison, and all of us who walk together in our synod. We pray for the armed forces that you may meet them wherever they are. Send chaplains and pastors to minister to them so that they may know you. We especially pray for our dear murderer as he continues to serve in the armed forces. Be with him all the days of his life. Guide and protect him. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. <clears throat> Triune God of all, hear us as we bring specific prayers and petitions of our members and friends of members of our congregation this day. We pray for healing and comfort for Carol Newton, wife to Warden. Carol recently suffered a stroke and has been released from the hospital and is in rehab. We pray also for patience and strength for Gordon and their family as they care for Carol in this time. We pray also for Dan Parker as he has been hospitalized with COVID. Please give him strength and peace in this time. Heal him. Give Dan the care that he needs in this time. We pray also for all the families in our congregation that have COVID. Work in them help, give them strength and peace and patience, and heal them in your time and your way. In all of these situations, Lord, we pray that your will be done. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Hear us now, O Lord, as we bring our sound prayers and petitions before you this day. We thank you, Lord, for hearing us this day, for blessing us with your Holy Spirit, and for sustaining us and giving us endurance to the race which you have set before us. Give us the confidence and peace to know the truth that lay in your holy word. All of this we pray in your Son's holy and most precious name, who taught us how to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. the just and holy one who kept your law. He bore our sins to the cross and became the means by which we are declared just and holy. Grant us to know and believe in him by faith, to rejoice in his gift of salvation, to guard this truth from error, and to proclaim it to all who have no right knowledge of him, who saves us by his grace. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, we pray. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Lord bless you and keep you. Lord make his face shine upon you 
and be gracious unto you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Amen.